Good morning, Year 3. To which I expect the reply, Good morning, Mr Humphreys. <laughs> Good morning, Year 3, Ely St John's School in Cambridge. Thank you for your fantastic questions. Thank you for interviewing me. Here we go. Question 1. How old were you when you began your bike journey around the world? That's from Finn. And it also wanted to know how many birthdays I had when I cycled around the world. Um, I was 24 when I set off to cycle around the world. I'd just finished university and I trained to be a teacher actually. But I realised that being a teacher is very, very hard work. And I'm a very lazy boy and that actually a much easier option than being a teacher was to spend four years cycling around the world, crossing deserts, cycling through Siberia in the middle of winter. So that means you should be very nice to your teachers because they work very hard and they deserve to get paid loads of money. Um, I had four birthdays when I was cycling around the world and birthdays were quite a sad, lonely time really. Same as Christmas, I miss my friends, miss my family and, and this is the sort of sacrifice you have to make for big, long journeys or doing anything difficult in life is there's, there's hard times to it too and um, yeah, being away from home on your birthday is a bit rubbish. Um, which leads on to Izzy's question of what made me bike around the world and leave my family behind. Um, of course, leaving my family behind was sad and I missed them, but but I knew that they would always be there for me and that there was only a certain time in my life when I could go have big adventures. And that seemed worth it, worth going off into the world to explore, to see beyond little old Britain where I'd spent all my life and just to see how seven billion people in the world live their lives, seeing normal things in different countries, how kids walk to school in Africa or how they help their families uh, in the fields in the Andes. It's really interesting to just see normal life around the world. Also I wanted to challenge myself, I wanted to do something difficult and tough. As I've told you I was too lazy to get a proper job and be a teacher and I had this dream, unrealistic but a dream, to one day be a travel writer. So I needed to have some adventures to write about. Um, Isaac's question, sorry, how did I celebrate my birthdays? I didn't really, I just kept riding, it's a bit rubbish. Although I did a load of talks in schools around the world for a charity called Hope and Homes for Children. And I spoke at a school in Chile in South America and one of the uh, children there asked about my birthdays and I said, oh, I've got no friends, no birthday. Next day was Saturday and I was staying with a teacher there for a few days. There was a knock on the door, open the door, no one there, look down, small people, probably about year three, no offence, and they'd come to throw me a birthday party. I had cake and uh, we had a party, so I did actually have one birthday party, thanks to those children in Chile, in a town called Concepcion in Chile. How much luggage did you bring? asks Imogen. I put those bags that fix onto your wheels, um, they're called panniers, um, and I had two on the front, two on the back, and then a sort of sausage bag that was waterproof with my tent and sleeping bag in that I stuck on the back. And on the front, on the handlebars, I had a small bag where I could put things that I would need along the way, like um, my camera, sun cream, things like that. And also in the side that I tucked my toothbrush and toothpaste. Because you know you're meant to brush your teeth for two minutes in the morning, and you will know, being year three, that you probably can't be bothered to do that. So what I would do in the morning, I'd get on my bike, I'd start riding, and I had eight, nine, ten hours of cycling to go. So I'd just start the day riding along, brushing my teeth. Two minutes um, to kill a bit of time and make sure I had nice, clean teeth. How do you cross oceans? Asks Struan. Um, I crossed oceans by boat. So I crossed the English Channel to France by ferry. Um, I crossed the Atlantic Ocean to South America uh, on a sailing boat. I crossed the Pacific Ocean to um, <laughs> Asia. <laughs> Asia. Uh, this is why I wouldn't be a good geography teacher. I crossed the Pacific Ocean from Alaska to Asia on a big cargo ship. Really exciting ways to cross the oceans. What did you do at Christmas? asked Gregory. Well, Christmas, um, my first Christmas, I was in Jordan in the Middle East. It's a Muslim country, so it wasn't Christmas. It was just Tuesday, a normal day. I actually arrived at Petra, which you should Google. It's one of the coolest places in the world. So that was quite a nice place to be on Christmas Day. My next Christmas Day was in Cape Town, South Africa, and a family invited me a hot sunny barbecue. Um, next Christmas was in Colombia. 
uh, wasn't very exciting. Next one was in Japan, again, not really a Christian country, um, and lots of people seem to eat Kentucky Fried Chicken as the nearest to Turkey. And then I was pleased to get home just in time for my fifth Christmas. My favourite place, asks B. It's really hard because you like places for lots of different reasons. For example, there were places where I loved the people, the Middle East, wonderful people. There are places where I love the food, Japan, um, Middle East again, Georgia, um, China. There were places where I loved the landscapes, um, Bolivia, uh, Kyrgyzstan, and there were places that were just easy and fun and friendly and kind, like, um, like riding through America. So I liked everywhere for different reasons. Tom wants to know the warmest and coldest. Warmest, 45 degrees in Sudan and then in Turkmenistan. Coldest, minus 40 degrees in Siberia. Much, much colder than being inside a freezer. If you had to choose, I think the hardest is being... What well, the hardest, the worst is basically what you don't have at the time. When you're too hot, you want to be cold. When you're too cold, you want to be hot. Favourite food? Or oh, I just mentioned some nice places for that. Um, I did enjoy China and Lebanon. Ethiopia has really good food, spicy but really good. Um, my favourite animal, I'm guessing Toby means my favourite animal to see, not my favourite animal to eat. Uh, dog in China, sorry. Um, favourite animal, seeing whales when I crossed the ocean was pretty awesome. Seeing elephants and uh, giraffes cycling through Africa, seeing grizzly bears cycling through Canada and Alaska, they were all pretty, pretty wonderful. I liked llamas too, they were fun and a bit silly. Did you really eat barbecued guinea pig? Asked Dylan. Dylan, if you have a guinea pig, I'm sorry. Yes, I did. They get served like this, with chips, and they're pretty tasty, I'm sorry to say. Kind of like chicken and chips. How many times do you have to repair your bike? Asked Sophie. I got through three bikes on the trip, so I had a lot of breakages and repairs along the way. Uh, but I also got so many punctures, I don't know, 50, 60 punctures. I had to fix lots of spokes because my bike was so heavy, it broke, the wheels broke a lot on, on rocky roads. Um, and also quite a lot of time I just had to fix things using tape and string, whatever I could find until I got myself to a, a city that had a proper bike shop. How do you keep in touch with your family? Asks Imogen. I didn't take a phone or a laptop because I wanted to be free of all that out in the wild. And when I got to an internet cafe uh, in, um, in cities, I'd, go, I'd find a cafe that had computers where you could use the internet. That's what happened back in the olden days of 10 years ago. And um, I'd send emails from there. And I'd say, hi mum, I'm here, I'm fine. From now I'm gonna cycle to this next town. You won't hear me from, from me for about two weeks. Don't worry, I'll be fine. How much food did you have? asks Megan. I would carry enough food to get me from one town to the next town. Sometimes that was food for one day, sometimes two days. Um, I used a, a day's food spare just in case. Um, sometimes, say in, in Russia or in Alaska or in, in the Andes mountains, I was carrying food for about 10 days. Think about how much food you have in 10 days. The bike gets really heavy then particularly in dry places where you also have to carry lots and lots of water. 17 litres is the most water I carry, which weighs, that's right, no not you, you, yep yeah, that's right, 17 kilograms, heavy heavy stuff. How long did it take you to write the three uh, books for children, The Boy You Bite the World? asked Edward. I've, I, I've done about a thousand talks in schools to children about cycling around the world and so that thousand talks helped me in my head work out what bits hopefully were interesting for children before I started to write. Um, I actually began writing the book straight away when I got back from cycling around the world. Um, and I wrote a lot but I couldn't find a publisher. No one wanted to publish it. They all said, nah, we're not interested, not interested. So it wasn't until I'd published a few other books and established a little bit of a reputation that anyone cared enough to publish those books. After that it took me about a year to write each book. Generally I write one book every year. Um, I could do them quicker, maybe I should do them quicker, I'm a bit lazy. I spend a lot of time doing stuff like this, videoing nice things and uh, when I finish talking to you I'm going to get on with writing my next book. No more time wasting today. How many adventures have you been on? asked Maisie. 
I've no idea. I've been on quite a few big ones like cycling around the world, walking across India, walking across desert, rowing across the Atlantic Ocean, big things like that, maybe 10. But I've also done lots of what I call micro adventures. And this is what I think you guys should get out to do. Small, local, cheap adventures with your friends, with your family, with your class, with your mum and dad, with your friends, mum and dad. Go camping, go swim in a river, go climb a tree, do fun stuff in the outdoors. All of these things are adventures and you can do them wherever you live this weekend. There's so many adventures we can all have. Final question comes from Gracie. How many bikes do you have? My answer is I do not have enough bikes. My wife's answer is you have too many bikes. Um, there's a rule for people who love bikes that however many bikes you have, you always want just one more bike. At the moment I have, it's not a good sign that I have to count them, is it? I have four bikes at the moment. I have a, a road bike, a mountain bike, a folding up bike that you can take nice on the train and then a cheap old rubbish bike that I use for cycling to the railway station that I won't be too sad about if it gets stolen. So I've got four bikes, maybe I'll get another one. Four's quite a lot though. Thank you very much for listening to my questions, thank you for asking such good questions, thank you for reading The Boy Who Bite The World. I'm currently writing my next book for children um, which is going to be out in August called Great Adventurers. I hope you'll enjoy that as well. And please, go climb a hill, climb a tree, swim in a river, have some adventures, do your homework, listen to your teacher, and brush your teeth for two minutes. The end. <laughs>